Hi, the question in this video is about trigonometry pertaining to double angle formula, Pythagorean trigonometric identities, as well as solving trigonometric equations. In part A of this question, solve 7 cosine theta over 2 equals to 10 sine theta for the range of theta from 0 to 2 pi inclusive. In a separate part B question, you are to prove that a fraction with a numerator of secant x tangent x plus secant square x over the denominator of bracket tangent x plus secant x close bracket power of 2 plus 1 is equals to half. You might want to pause this video to give this question a try and when you're ready, keep watching. For part A of this question, we are told to solve this trigonometric equations whereby the angle on the left is a theta over 2 and the angle on the right is a theta. Before we can solve this trigonal equation, we will first have to convert both angles to be of the same and therefore we will convert this theta into the angle of theta over 2 using the sine double angle formula over here whereby sine 2a can be written as a 2 sine a cos a. So converting this sine theta as our step 1 of part a we are rewriting as a 2 sine theta over 2 cosine theta over 2 using the yellow color formula. At the same time, the range of angle of theta range from 0 to 2 pi, and the angle of theta over 2, the range will have to be converted as well, so now the range is from 0 to pi inclusive after we divide by 2 on the left and right of each range. So over here, we will now do a simple expansion and uh, shifting to the left, and at the same time, factoring out cosine theta over 2, open the brackets, we now have a 7 minus away 20 because that's 10 times 2, so it'll be 20 sine theta over 2, close bracket equals to 0. Now the first solution set happens when we set the cosine theta over 2 to be equal to 0, having it like this. So when will cosine be a 0? We can refer to our trigonal sketch over here. Cosine curve will be a 0 at angle of pi over 2, as well as 3 pi over 2. Now 3 pi over 2, if you do a simple check against the converted range, is definitely our range. So there could be only one solution from this solution set. So the angle will now be equal to pi over 2. So theta over 2 will be a pi over 2. Moving over to the second solution set, where we set 7 minus 20 sine theta over 2 to be equal to 0. And shifting it to the right, we will be having sine theta over 2 to be equal to 7 over 20. And to find our basic angle alpha, we have it like this, sine inverse of 7 over 20. So that's our basic angle alpha or reference angle alpha. And of course, um, when will sine be a positive? Now, sine will be a positive in the first two quadrant, ASTC, first two quadrant. At the same time, um, the range, the newly converted range was also in the first two quadrants. So we only had the first two quadrants to play about. So in the first quadrants, it will be alpha. In the second quadrant, it will be a pi minus alpha. So you are not required to draw any quadrant diagrams for the solution, but for your understanding, I have drawn it over here. Now, what happens if your angles is in the first quadrant, theta over 2 is in the first quadrant, we draw it like this, alpha. So this is a theta over 2 in the first quadrant, and to describe this angle will just simply be an alpha. And to describe the second quadrant's angle, whereby you start from here, the angle goes until here, so this is your theta over 2. Now your alpha is over here, and uh, how do we then describe this angle of theta over 2? We can describe it as a pi minus away alpha, all right, pi minus away alpha. So theta over 2 will be a pi minus alpha as well as an alpha. So solving for theta for this whole thing will therefore give us this answer of 0 0.715 comma pi comma 5.57 after we multiply 2 to all of these solutions. And that's the answer for part A of this question. For part B of this question, we are asked to do a simple proving of this trigonometric identity over here. And on the left hand side, we have a secant x, a tangent x, a secant squared, as well as a tangent squared if you expand this part. So it's a combination of a few things which is very complicated and on the right hand side is just simply a fraction of half. So for any proving of trigonometric identity, we will always start from the more complicated side, in this case the left hand side. So copying down the left hand side, we have this. 
Now, as you can see here, for the left-hand side, we do have a combination of secant x, tangent x, secant squares on top, as well as uh, tangent squares if you do an expansion, secant squares, as well as uh, two tangent x, secant x. So it's pretty much everything is all in the similar terms, similar trigonometric functions. The only thing that is so-called unwanted is just simply a ones. So we need to think of ways to get rid of one. Consider the fact that they are all angles of the same, so same angle of x over here. So that means to say we are not going to use any double angle. And the only formulas we are left with is just simply a Pythagorean trigonometric identities. And we are going to be using this, whereby a second square a is equals to 1 plus tangent square a. So there are three Pythagorean trigonometric identity. As to why am I using this particular one is because second square a is something that is um, used over here on top. And tangent square a is something that is available below. So using this formula seems to be the ideal choice. So setting 1 to be the subject, so 1 can be written as a secant square a minus tangent square a, and replacing that into our functions in our left-hand side, 1 can be written as a secant square x minus the rate tangent square x. At the same time, for the bottom, we do a simple expansion. If you square the first term, we have a tangent square x. If you square the last term, we have a secant square x. If you do a 2ab, we do have a 2 tangent x secant x. And the top remains the same. Moving over to the next steps over here, whereby the secant square x plus secant square x can be written to be a 2 secant square x, and the tangent square x minus the rate tangent square x is now gone. Simplifying, we should have this part. As you can see here, um, it is just simply a tangent x secant x, and this is 2 times of it. This is a secant square x, and this is 2 times of it. So we want to factor out the bottom part like this. So factoring out the two, we will therefore have a secant x tangent x plus secant square x close brackets and cancelling these common terms to the top and bottom shall give us a 1 over 2. And that's the answer for part b. We have successfully proved this trigonometric identity. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something again. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and see you in the next episode of Practical Math.